Hello, my friends. Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa Stringworks Man Cave. It is Wednesday, March 20th, 2024. I've got a large program ready for you this morning. Quite a few video clips and other things. <laughs> There's quite a bit to cover today. And I thought I'd just go ahead and start off with uh, one of another one of my original songs that I don't think I've ever played before on the channel. And uh, I'm going to do this one in the key of E, Edward. It's called This Time I Failed. I thought I might as well start it off with a real feel-good song. <laughs> my heart is broken While yours beats strong You say you're right But I think you're wrong Time will tell a sorrowful tale how I tried to love you, but you made me fail. Well, this time I failed. Did you plan it that way? Well, you owe me that much. What have you to say? This time I failed. Are you playing a game? This time I failed. Cause you gave back my name. Well, you never seem cold. Till that final day. When you stared straight ahead And had nothing to say That judge decided And you turned to me Then I saw a side of you That I never had seen Well this time I failed did you plan it that way? You owe me that much. What have you to say? This time I fail. Are you playing a game? This time I fail. Cause you gave back my name. Oh, this time I failed Cause you gave back my name It's got sustain, that's for sure. This is the auction mandolin. You better get your bids in on that thing. You got about another seven or eight days to go. Can you believe it's March 20th already? Where are these months going? It's just nuts. It's like every other day it's another month. It's terrible. It's getting away fast. It's really getting away fast. Well, I got a lot to talk about today. First of all, I'll just go ahead and show you my t-shirt. It says, Lettuce, the taste of sadness. And uh, had I been making this shirt, I would have said lettuce, the taste of compost. Because that's the only place lettuce is going to go if i am got anything to do with it. It's going in the compost pile. <laughs> I'll grow potatoes with it. Uh, let's see. Um, talking about the live auction here. The uh, classical uh, Taylor classical guitar is still at $750. The Martin D... Uh, 25k still at 1200 and the rosa mandolin is still at 3250 all of them are great buys in my opinion that taylor classical is just like brand new the martin d25 has had a new setup on it and it's really plays well it really plays good you those of you who think a martin can't play well buy that guitar and you'll see that they can play well um the rosa mandolin I just played it, so you saw it. It's a good mandolin. I really do 
say that uh, even though I, you know, obviously would be prejudiced, it's uh, a real good mandolin. You'll really like it if you get it. Well, this morning from 4.30 till 5 a.m., I created the vlog that you're seeing right now. In other words, all the stuff that you're going to see, the videos and everything, was all done between 4.30 and 5 this morning. Then from 5 o'clock till 7 o'clock this morning, I worked on uh, the next video that I'm editing, which is a fiddle video. Uh, I uh, restored a fiddle that someone gave to Smiley Face Fiddle Girl. <laughs> Her name is Gina Heizinga. You've seen her on the channel before. She's always smiling. And I, that's, so I just gave her that nickname, Smiley Face Fiddle Girl. And uh, anyway, Gina was at the uh, Dickie's Barbecue Pit last night and played the fiddle. And I'm going to show you a clip of that here in just a moment. But uh, anyway, that's the video I edited from uh, 5 till 7 this morning. Um, there was 200, or see, there was uh, two hours and 30 minutes of raw footage when I started, and I got 25 minutes into the video editing. That's as far as I got in two hours. <laughs> so, uh, and that that only got rid of a little bit of the raw footage, actually. So I still got a most of the raw footage to go through. I mean, I've still got over two hours of raw footage to go through. Um, let's see. When I'm finished with it, it'll probably be about an hour long. So that's what I'm expecting anyway. I got these uh, CDs returned in the mail uh, yesterday, apparently. <clears throat> and the name on it was Kinley ba Bagent, B-A-G-E-N-T or Bagent, uh, one of the two, uh, from Crescent Lake, Oregon. So if Kinley is watching, you might want to send me an email with an updated address because it says Return to Sender, the old Elvis song. Return to sender. Um, but anyway, it says, uh, vacant, unable to forward, return to sender. So, anyway, I've got your CDs here. If you want to give me a different address, I'll get them back out to you. Uh, let's see, what else? <clears throat> um, as I was preparing or getting cleaned up to go to Dickie's last night because I'd been working hard all day. Um, just as I'm ready to walk out the door, Sue told me the water heater's leaking. <laughs> just one more thing. Like I don't have enough to do already. And uh, so the uh, propane gas water heater is uh, leaking. And so I took her truck and uh, picked up a new water heater while I was in town. I also picked up a couple of bags of mortar mix while I was in there to start laying this rock wall. Um, I didn't get the Portland cement uh, mainly because I had so much on the card already and that Portland cement was another 100 pounds and I just decided I'll just wait on that if I need it. I kind of think the way I'm going to lay it up now, I won't need the Portland cement to make it cure faster, but I still might. Um, anyway, um, be that as it may, I, I did have a brainstorm yesterday on how I'm going to lay this wall up. I'm not going to give it away because it'll be in the video whenever I make the actual video. Um, assuming it works, and I think it will. Um, I also got some stainless steel fasteners for fastening those wooden pieces around that steel water wheel that you saw in a previous video. So, uh, as I said, we were at Dickie's Barbecue last night, and I actually asked Gina to come specifically so she could play the fiddle, and I could get a little video clip to help end the video that I've been editing that I was telling you about. So, in other words, I had forgot to put an ending on it, and I thought, well, the best ending would be if Gina would just come and play the fiddle, and then uh, I'll put that at the end of the video. So, I'm going to just give you a taste of this clip Right now, I'm not going to play the whole thing uh, because you're going to get to hear it again in a full video down the road. So here's that clip. My friends, we're here at Dickie's Barbecue Pit here in Rolla, Missouri. And uh, uh, Gina Heizinga, otherwise known as Smiley Face Fiddle Girl on the YouTube channel, is uh, going to play her fiddle that we uh, restored. And uh, here we go. What are we going to play, Gina? We're going to do. St. Anne's Reel in the key of D. Thank you. 
So I just wanted to play a little bit of that so you could see what's going to be uh, in. Uh, that, that'll be the end of the actual fiddle video when I get it done. Uh, had a good time last night. We uh, There was a medium-sized crowd there, and they all seemed very appreciative. We had a lot of fun. So if you can ever make it to Dickie's on the first or third Tuesday night of the month, uh, we're there from 6 to 8.30 each time. Uh, Ron, my buddy, you know, he's helped me out in the shop a few times and he's helped me here on the farm quite a bit. Uh, and he goes deer hunting here and stuff. Uh, Ron was, uh, there last night and, uh, he had a picture of a little tiny fish that he caught. Here it is. So, uh, and I didn't even know Ron Fish, to be honest with you. So I, that it really surprised me when he showed me that. The, uh, I have a little clip. Uh, while I was out there uh, gathering rocks and things, which I'll show you that clip in a minute. But uh, while I was out there working outside, the Purple Martins returned. So here's a little clip on that. Well, the Martins are back. That's the first time they've been back in March that I can remember here. There's one flying around up there. He's hard to keep on camera, but there he is. And he's flying to the house. Let's see if I can zoom up a little more. I don't want to scare him off, get up too close and scare him off on day one. There he is. So I'm real happy to see that. So I'm real happy to see that. Of course, they'll be fluttering in and out for a while. I'm just gonna go on about my business collecting rocks and leave them alone. Yeah, as far as I know, that's the first time they've been here in March. Um, uh, that, like I said, one year they didn't cut, show up till July. And I, I had given up on them. I thought, well, there's no way they're going to come now. And sure enough, they showed up right around July 4th. I mean, it was real close to Independence Day. And they raised the quickest family and were out of here by, I don't know, sometime in September. It did, they weren't here long. <laughs> it was amazing. But they did actually raise a family and, and they got out of here. But that was quite a few years ago when that happened. But uh Anyway, uh, they've been coming pretty regularly the last several years, and so I'm real glad to see that. Um, trying to make sure I'm not missing something here. Oh, yeah. I um, After seeing that, well, then I got busy again on building my next uh, Purple Martin um uh, same thing as you could see in the video there where you can hang a bunch of gourds off of it. I don't even know what you would call that thing. It's a slide that was go up and down the pole. So I've got another pole right next to there. And so I'm building a new slide that I can clamp around the pole and then, you know, uh, hook it onto that pole and then raise it up and down. So I started building that yesterday. I don't have any clips on that, but uh, I've got that pretty far done. So if I get time today, I'm going to try to finish that up and get that mounted. Um, so, because they're coming back, you know, and I want to have it ready. Um, let's see, what's the very next thing? Uh, well, I was picking up rocks, so uh, here's the video clip on that. Well, my friends, I'm down here in the creek picking up rocks to build the rock wall for the water wheel. Now, you know, logic would tell you that the bigger rocks would be better because they'll go up much faster. And I don't disagree with that, but I have a different constraint. And that is that the axle for the water wheel is only so long. I don't have any extra length to work with. So I don't want the wall to be more than about five inches thick. So I'm picking up all kinds of smaller rock. And you can see I've already picked up quite a few out of this creek. I'm picking up as large as I think I can get by with but I don't want them to be larger than five inches in width in the one direction that matters. Um, 
so anyway we're just gonna see what happens this is you know the beginnings of load number one i haven't got it i don't think i've got this thing overloaded yet i can still see shocks that haven't pressed down all the way so i'm going to add another couple of arm loads in here and uh then we'll go dump this and we'll do this a couple more times because we're going to need this right here would be enough to get me maybe a foot high on the wall i mean honestly i don't think it'll get more than a foot high if i'm lucky that's how high i would get so it's going to take a lot to get up to about six feet tall and maybe seven feet tall is where i probably need to have it <laughs> yeah um well i'm going to continue on with that but i did notice some comments that there was no sound when i had ron's picture up there well i know what that happened there i uh, i didn't think about it I, again i put this together from 4 30 to 5 so probably wasn't thinking too clear um i forgot to turn the microphone on on that little segment and uh so what i was trying to say about ron's fish is that that looked like pretty good sized fish i i think they call that a um a, a spoonbill or a paddlefish one of those i forget the name of it now paddlefish i think is what most people call it but anyway um <clears throat> that uh fish was caught in the james river which fed into the uh, table rock lake the only other thing I said, I think, was that uh, I didn't even know Ron was a fisherman. But uh, so it really surprised me when he showed me that picture. Um, the next video on uh, rocks is coming up here right now. Well, here's load number two. Wow, I just see something here. That rock looks flaked like natives would have flaked it, but... That's odd. I wonder if they chip something off there for a flake to skin a rabbit or something with. That really does look flaked. Well, anyway, besides that, that's a fairly heavy load of rock. It's probably at least as big as this load. And some of these rock are a little bigger. While I was picking up this load, I thought of a new way that I'm going to lay this. And I really think it might work. Um, I'm not going to give it away right now. I'll show it to you in the video as the video comes out down the road. But uh, anyway, I think I've had a revelation. I hope it works. It's hard to find all the... There's so many things here to click on this morning. <laughs> it takes me a second to find it. Um, okay, and then let's see. Then I have yet one more uh, little clip here about the rock pile uh, and a little bit more with that. So here you go. One thing I know for absolute certainty is we are not going to run out of stone. Uh, there's plenty more from where that came from. And uh, all it takes is uh, a little bit of uh, elbow grease, a little bit of hard labor to get her there but that'll get me started i think i'll stop right there for until i get all that laid up and we'll see how far that takes me then i'll at least know how many more loads i'm going to need and it's a beautiful day today considering that it was 22 degrees last night to see a snake out here on these rocks uh, seemed kind of crazy to see a snake out here today, but I'm sure he was out here sunning himself. Beautiful day. Yeah, um, I I was fighting with my camera to get it on quick enough to uh, get the snake on camera because he was a pretty big water snake. I think it was what you call a banded water snake. Um, I get couldn't get up close enough to see his eyes if the if the eyes are round he's non-poisonous if the eyes have a slit you know look like they're um you know i don't know, like a cat's eye or something where it goes crosswise anyway if it if it goes uh across horizontal like that they're poisonous and uh, you know and i couldn't tell if you know if it was a, a water moccasin whatever you want to call it a cotton mouth uh or if it was a banded water snake now i'm pretty sure it was a banded water snake but like i said i didn't get close enough to see its eyes so that's the only way i could tell for sure on on a snake like that now copperhead i can tell now by the way the banded water snake uh 
they look a lot like a copperhead. They really do. Uh, it's just the difference in the color. The copperhead, uh, even though I'm colorblind, I can see a significant difference in the coloration of the copperhead versus the, the banded water snake. The banded water snake's much darker. The bands are much darker. The copperhead is much lighter. So I know it wasn't a copperhead, but it could have possibly been, you know, cottonmouth, I guess, possibly. Although I don't think I've ever seen one of those in Missouri either, even though they claim they're here. Um, let's see. The next thing, the next little uh, clip is uh, the actual water flow. I thought I'd show you that up close. So here's how the spring is running right now. You can see it. It's a little more than what a garden hose would be running. They're about the same, probably. And you can see it flows underground through here, and then it comes out right there. Maybe you can see the water moving. I don't know if it shows up very good at that angle, but there is quite a bit of water moving through there. Doesn't really show up very good in the camera. And there's the ducks, MR ducks, CM wings. You remember that old joke? I forget how it goes now, but it's all with letters, you know. M, R, ducks, C, M, wings, I don't know. Something like that. There was more to it than that, but I can't remember it. Uh, let's see, what else? Is that it? I think, gee whiz, that might be it. Um, my plans for today are that... Uh, I'm going to install a water heater. That's the first thing I'm going to do. If I get that done, then I'm probably going to finish up the uh, Martin house thing real quick. That shouldn't take me too long, maybe another hour or two. And then I plan, if I get that done, then I'm going to go down there and start building uh, the form that I'm going to use to lay up that rock. The form idea is what's going to make it fairly easy to lay that up, I think, if it works the way I think it's going to work. That's about all I'm going to give away right now, and you'll see it in an upcoming video eventually. Let's go to the uh, comments. Eddie Turner was number one out there this morning. John Pepper, followed by Rotten Wintler. He's, that's second morning in a row. Rod, uh, Rod's been uh, third, I think it is. And let's see, looking for question marks in case there are any. Dottie says she's praying for my hands. Well, Dottie, I've been praying for you too. I hope you're doing well today. And Dottie says, how about a chirp? Well, you heard one. I didn't see any comments on it, so it must have been one of those uh, just that's the reason it's sitting on the shelf kind of call, uh, songs. <laughs> uh, let's see. Bill Rhodes says, good morning from Warrington. Looking for more question marks. Don't see any before we went live, so let's go. After we went live, are there anything? Lots of private conversations going on there, so. Okay, looks like Carolyn Fike has one, says, Jerry, did you know that U of FL turtle experts say that... Uh, Iceberg lettuce is unfit food for turtles. It's actually dangerous. <laughs> well, maybe I'm part turtle. <laughs> you know, I, I'm not making this up. I, I did do this, and it's it was, you know, my whole life, you know. I, I didn't know I, I had this taste thing. I didn't know it. I just thought I was a picky kid because that's what everybody said. You're just picky. You're just one of those little picky kids. You won't try nothing. You won't eat nothing. Well, I didn't know I had this taste disorder. Well, anyway, so we're uh, Sue and I were dating, and I think I think I was still in high school, so I maybe hadn't even found out about the taste thing yet because uh, I found that out in my senior year of high school. So uh, anyway, Sue and I were dating, and we went out to a restaurant, and I said to her, I said, this time I'm going to man up, and I'm going to order a, a, a salad, and I'm going to eat it. I, you know, I said, I'm just going to make myself eat it. I don't care. I'm going to do it. <laughs> One bite, <laughs> and I'm going, <laughs> there ain't, no way this is going down. I mean, as soon as I put it in my mouth, it's 
it, it, I'm not lying to you when I say this. It, it, in fact, it, this would be mild. It would be like you going out and getting a whole handful of tr- green tree leaves and chomping on them and just chewing them up and eating them. You'd, it, that would be mild compared to what I what this tastes like to me. Um, in fact, I would say it's closer to something like uh, taking a swig of gasoline and going, oh, that's good. I think I'll try some more. You can't do it. It's impossible. And that's the way it was. I couldn't make myself do it. I, I had my mind all set that I was going to eat some salad, you know. It didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. And I, that's the last time I've ever tried. I said, forget it. It ain't going to happen. So, yeah, it's dangerous to turtles. It's also dangerous to this guy right here. Uh, Carolyn Fife says, I'm so enjoying your original songs. Well, thank you. Uh, Bill Webb says, love the song, keep them coming. Well, there are some comments on the song that I, I thought I didn't see any before. Mighty Fine Chirp says, Dottie. Well, thank you. Um, yeah, I wrote that one. And I'll tell you what, uh, uh, Jimmy, um, golly, I can't believe I'm stuttering on his name. I know his name as good as I know my name. Um, from Midnight Flight, Jimmy Allison uh, he was the leader of the band and very good singer, very good musician. I did a uh, a tribute to Jimmy when he passed away uh, on the channel. It's it's an older video now, but uh, anyway, uh, he was going to record that song and uh, something happened. We just he just never got around to it. The one I just did, he was going to record that. <clears throat> Uh, Michael 2X says, Hey, Rose, uh, Rosa Meister from Georgia, Evans, Georgia. And then Wayne Blitz, good morning, Jerry. Hope you had a good day picking stones for your wall. Uh, yeah, from the old dairy farmer, Wayne Blitz. Yeah, I, it wasn't too difficult. I got them picked up there, and I don't know how high that'll get me. Um, Definitely no more than two feet. I'm pretty sure of that. Now, what's weird is I'm going to have to do some real careful measuring because that water wheel is going to be at least five foot in diameter. It's a four foot right now, and I'm going to probably add, I don't know if I'm going to add six inch buckets or maybe just four inch buckets. I don't know. I'm going to try to keep them as compact as I can, but yet big enough to catch water, you know. And um, so that's going to add diameter to the wheel, you know. And uh, so I'm going to have to uh, lower, I'm going to, you know, dig out under there where I've got all that white gravel now. And mostly that was there so you could walk there because it's so swampy. But anyway, I'm going to have to dig a lot of that out, I think, in order to set the wheel there to get the wheel low enough so that the pipe, you know, can will be above the wheel. Otherwise, you know, the water's coming out at a fixed height. I can't change that. So I've got to lower the wheel down. And so I'll probably have to dig out a whole lot of that gravel to make that happen. Therefore, the wall probably won't be very tall where the axle goes through the wall. And, and in case you don't understand, the, the wall can't be real thick. If I made it real thick, I can't get the axle through because the, I only have about a three-foot piece of axle. That's all I got. And it's, it's a two-inch heavy-duty steel, and I'm not planning to buy a whole big thing of steel just to fix this. So I'm planning to make do with what I got. But uh, So therefore, the wall can't be real thick. Otherwise, I can't mount it, you know, and make it work. Anyway, I've got most of that thought out, but it's still quite a bit of figuring and, and thinking. And yeah, so and then Rod says no audio when the fish pick was up. Yep, and that's why because I forgot to put the audio thing on the screen here. And yeah, there you go. I should have uh, should have added a scene, but well, it's hard to explain. I I won't even get into it. It, it this this software is so finicky. It's all I can tell you. Uh, and that's what led up to the problem though, because I I was skinning the cat from a different direction than I normally do it so I can make something else work and then I forgot to put the audio on. <clears throat> All right, so moving down. Bill Webb says he would call it a cluster, talking about the Martin house, I'm sure. Uh, James Cop, morning from San Leon, Texas, and fixing to dig a pond with a mini excavator and a cat 299D2 skid steer at my friend's property in exchange for money and goats i will send pictures in the email okay um bill webb the 
slit is vertical in the eyes. Okay, well, I don't remember which way, but I know it's a slit. Um, was the cypress tree missing? No, I guess I was just shooting around it. It's right there. Um, <clears throat> Dottie Hildebrand, ain't no way I'd get close enough to check the snake's eyes. Uh, if I saw the snake, I'd probably hurt myself getting away from the snake. Yeah, I'm not too afraid of them, really, honestly. I'm just really not. I mean, I respect the heck out of them. I don't want to get bit by a poisonous one. Um, David Tharp, uh, OCD puppies, MNO puppies, O. Oh, I got you. You're, you're doing one of those deals. OSMR puppies. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I never heard it with puppies. I always heard it with ducks for some reason. Uh, Gary Cooper. The famous Gary Cooper? No, he's dead. It can't be him. <laughs> Lettuce is for rabbits. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and I, I pity rabbits, actually. <laughs> I, that the joke I often say is, uh, you know, I don't when I'm ordering a steak at the restaurant, you know, and I and I just want a pl plain. I don't want you to add anything to it, you know. And I said, and if the cow ate in the garden, I don't even want that steak. Give me a different one. <laughs> Gary Hyden, uh, I enjoyed the smiling fiddle girls playing. I'd like to see her on your live concert. She's been on a couple of them over the past. Um, She's very good, and she likes the fiddle that I set up. Uh, she really likes it. In fact, she had a you know she's been playing a different fiddle for years, and since I set this one up for her, she likes it better because it's got a a more mellow tone. And you know, I I did everything I could to make it sound as good as I could make it sound. I think you're gonna like this video when it comes out on on that fiddle. Um, I don't want to give too much away on it, but uh, I'll just uh, quietly whisper the word. Hide glue, hide glue. Yeah, you'll you'll see all about some issues on that. Um, <laughs> uh, Blackjack Guitar asked the same question I did, and he, you're going to get the same answer I got. I don't know how many pounds that fish was. Uh, he didn't know how big it was, but they were guessing around 50. I'm guessing at least 50. <laughs> it looked like every bit of that. <clears throat> Chip Wood, would you please do another video on your laser cutter? I'm looking into purchasing one and giving my scroll saw a rest. Okay, I'll try to get one of those out there. Um, <clears throat> I don't use it all that much lately, but uh, maybe when I'm back down there doing something, I'll try to remember to do that. It might be a little while, Chip. Simon Jardine, I'd love to cut some wide solid mahogany. I have a thin enough to make... Uh, oh, so, uh, cut some wide solid mahogany I have. Thin enough to make a soundboard. I don't have the a bandsaw. Any ideas? Um... <laughs> I'm thinking you can do it on a table saw. I mean, it, it the, the problem is you're going to have more seams probably. You, like your table saw will cut maybe three and a half inches. So if you cut one way, you'll get three and a half inches. You flip it over and you cut the other way, you'll get seven inches. And then you could put two seven inch boards together and that's 14 inches. So that gets you pretty close. Now, if you're trying to make a guitar, that may not be big enough. Um, but anyway, uh, that's about all I got if you don't have a, a bandsaw. Bandsaws are pretty handy. Now, mine's a, a, deep, a fairly deep throat one. It'll cut, I don't know, I'm going to say about 12 inches through. And I will say this, for those of you other, not so much to you specifically, but to anybody out there, if you are cut slicing your own uh, veneer type stuff, I'm seriously telling you, Get one of those uh, uh, carbide t tooth bandsaw blades. Oh my gosh, it changes everything. I, I'm seriously telling you, I didn't even. I thought this was going to be a real nightmare sawing those. You know, they're seven inches thick and sawing that curve out of those pieces for this water wheel. Nothing to it. I mean, it. Didn't, you couldn't even. You might as well have been sawing something that thick. I mean, it was. You couldn't even tell it was that thick. It just went right through it like butter. 
It was easy to saw. And had I known that years ago, I'd have, that's all I'd ever be using would be one of those carbide teeth uh, bandsaw blades. Oh my gosh, that thing was, it was awesome. It really was. Uh, moving on down here. Ben Boyd, we always called our multiple Martin houses complexes. Yeah, well, I've heard it called that. Um, I don't know what I'd call them when they're hanging gourds like this. I, I, I've heard the complexes as in, uh, you know, those wooden houses, multiple poles. Um, but anything could be a complex like that. Leo Vanderwall, too, too bad you didn't film the cutting of the water wheel pieces. How did you do it? Uh, freehand? Yeah, I did do it freehand. And did I film it? I think I did. Well, now that you say that, I'm not sure I did film that part. But uh, I am making a video about doing all that. And I, I think I did film it. I'm pretty sure I did. You just didn't see it in the vlog. You'll see it in the final video whenever that all comes out. Uh, Jeffrey Shu or Shao. Since COVID, I can't eat onions. Taste like a hog barn. <laughs> Smells was a favorite thing on hot dogs. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. Onions and me don't get along. Garlic and me don't get along. In fact, when they cook with garlic or cook with onions, I just almost have to go out of the house. I'm not kidding you. I can't stand it. Drives me bonkers. It's like the worst thing. I don't see how, I, I mean, I'm not saying this just for the video effect. I'm seriously telling you, I do not see how people put that in their mouth. I, I just don't. I just don't. I, it's not food at all to me. And it's like, golly, I can't believe you can eat that. And honestly, it's hard to set at the table when people have something that's that smells like that across from me because I have very sensitive smell too because of my sensitive taste, I think. It's just, boy, it kills me. It really does. Gotta fly Lee. What is the drum on your thickness sander made of, rubber or steel? Well, on my homemade thickness sander, it's uh, aluminum. It's not rubber or steel. It's aluminum. And uh, if that's what you're talking about. In fact, on the other one, it's aluminum also. On the commercial one, it's also aluminum. And I just use... Uh, the sticky, the rolled, the rolled sticky sand paper, uh, where you, do you peel it off or I'm trying to remember, does this one peel off or does it just have the sticky on? I think you peel it off. I think, I don't remember now to be honest with you, unless I go down and look at it. But anyway, it's got the sticky backing on the sandpaper and just wrap it around there. You wrap it at a slight angle so that the, the lines aren't straight, you know, it's like a barber pole type spiral. <clears throat> uh, condo gourds. <laughs> yeah, that's a good idea too, blackjack guitar. Guys, that's going to be it. I've got to go install a water heater and I just can't hardly wait. It's going to be so much fun. I've only done it about two dozen times in my life, maybe more than that. Um, I think I've told before that there are at least 11 bathrooms on this farm. 11. Uh, there's five in this main house. Um, there's one over there in the uh, <clears throat> apartment. There's uh, two and a half up there at the rental retreat. There's two in the uh, old farmhouse. And there's one in my shop. I mean, there's lots of bathrooms. So I've had plenty of opportunity to do plumbing in my life. And uh, w there's water heaters. There's multiple water heaters everywhere, too. And uh, I've done plenty of them just here on this farm is plenty but I've done them in other locations too so I'm almost a plumber I really am um well anyway I gotta go ahead and uh get busy so we're gonna let that be it y'all have a great day we will see you tomorrow with something else <laughs>